Doris Day, a name that resonates with the golden era of Hollywood, was a celebrated actress and singer whose career spanned more than six decades. In May of 2019, Day passed away at age 97. But in a surprising departure from the norm, she had no funeral or grave marker following her death. Join us as we investigate the reasons behind this decision. Life and Career Doris Day, born Doris Mary Ann Kappelhoff on April 3, 1922, in Cincinnati, began her journey to stardom at a young age. Her initial dream of becoming a dancer was cut short by a car accident in her teen years, but this led her to discover her true calling, music. While recovering from injuries, Day's singing talent was discovered, and by the age of 17, she was touring with the Les Brown Band. Her breakthrough in the music industry came in 1945 with the song Sentimental Journey, which quickly became an anthem for World War II troops returning home. Her soothing voice and wholesome image resonated with the public, leading to a successful music career with several hit records. In the late 40s, she transitioned to acting, making her film debut in Romance on the High Seas. Her natural charm and talent for comedy quickly made her a popular figure in Hollywood. Over the next two decades, Day starred in a series of successful films, including Calamity Jane, The Man Who Knew Too Much, and Pillow Talk, for which she received an Academy Award nomination. Day's career spanned multiple genres, including musicals, comedies, dramas, and thrillers. She became one of the biggest film stars of the 50s and 60s, embodying the ideal American woman of the era with her intelligent, wholesome, and optimistic on-screen persona. Throughout her career, she received numerous prestigious awards. In 1989, she was honored with the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award for her outstanding contribution to the movie industry. In 2004, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And in 2008, she was presented with the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, along with the Legend Award from the Society of Singers. The LA Film Critics Association honored her with the Career Achievement Award in 2011. Even in her later years, Day continued to make contributions to the music industry. She unveiled her 29th studio album, My Heart, in 2011. It included fresh tracks and achieved a top 10 position on the UK charts. As of 2020, she was among the eight music artists who have been the highest grossing act at the box office in the United States four times. Towards the end of her acting career, she shifted her focus to animals and co-founded Actors and Others for Animals. In 1978, she established the Doris Day Pet Foundation and after nine years became a founding member and president of the Doris Day Animal League, a lobbying organization that advocates for laws regulating the treatment of animals. Personal Struggles and Relationships Despite her sunny on-screen persona, her off-screen life was marked by a series of tumultuous relationships and personal tragedies. Her four marriages were fraught with issues, including domestic violence, infidelity, and financial instability. Her first husband was Al Jordan, a musician. They had a son named Terry, but the marriage didn't last long and they divorced after two years. She then married George Widler, but their union was also brief and they separated. Finally, in 1951, she married Martin Melcher, who was not only her husband, but also her manager. They were together until he passed away in 1968. Sadly, she faced financial difficulties during her third marriage. Her husband's poor investment choices and association with an unscrupulous lawyer led to significant financial losses after his death. This led to her bankruptcy and a subsequent nervous breakdown. But in 1974, she successfully sued the lawyer and received $22 million. Later, she had a short-lived marriage to Barry Comden that ended in divorce in 1981. After her fourth marriage, she chose to remain single for the remainder of her life. She devoted her time and energy to animal welfare, founding the Doris Day Animal Foundation. Her relationship with her only child, Terry, was a complex one. Despite the difficulties in the relationship, including Terry's adoption by Melcher, Day and her son shared a close bond. But her relationship with her grandson, Ryan Melcher, Terry's only child, was more complicated. According to Ryan, he was barred from seeing his grandmother during the final years of her life by her manager, Bob Bashara. In 2004, Doris experienced a significant personal tragedy. Terry, who had made a name for himself as a successful music producer, 
passed away after a fight with skin cancer. This loss, coupled with the estrangement from her grandson Ryan, added another layer of sorrow to Day's personal life. She was a private person who valued her solitude, a trait that became more pronounced in her later years. This preference for privacy, combined with the personal losses she endured, played a significant role in her decision not to have a funeral or a grave marker. The Estrangement from Her Grandson The estrangement between Doris Day and Ryan Melcher, her grandson, adds a layer of complexity to her personal life. Ryan, now a successful real estate agent, has spoken out about the estrangement, providing a glimpse into the dynamics that led to their separation. Ryan claims that after his father's death in 2004, Bob Bashara, Day's manager, took over Day's affairs and cut off communication between Day and her grandson. The last time Ryan spoke to his grandmother was after his father's death when she invited him to dinner, but this meeting never took place. Instead, Ryan was intercepted by Bashara, who questioned his motives for wanting to see his grandmother and ultimately prevented the meeting from happening. Ryan's attempts to reconnect with his grandmother were thwarted by Bashara, who, according to Ryan, fired the long-standing members of Day's foundation board and appointed his own family members in their place. Ryan's efforts to raise awareness about the situation were met with resistance, and he ultimately decided to stop fighting, fearing that his actions might cause stress for his grandmother, whose mental health was reportedly declining. Final Years and Death In her final years, Doris Day chose to retreat from the public eye, living a quiet life in Carmel-by-the-Sea, California. But she remained active in her passion for animal welfare. On May 13, 2019, she passed away at age 97. And in keeping with her private nature, Day made a surprising decision regarding the arrangements following her death. According to her friend and manager, Bob Bashara, it was disclosed that Day had made it clear in her will that she did not want any funeral, memorial service, or grave marker. This was not made out of fear or negativity, but rather a reflection of Day's personal beliefs. She did not like death, and she didn't like to talk about it. In her view, death was a part of life, and she didn't see the need for elaborate ceremonies or markers. Her decision was also influenced by her experiences in her final years. The estrangement from her grandson Ryan and the loss of her only son Terry were significant factors. These personal losses, coupled with her preference for privacy, led to her unique final wishes. In later years, Day found solace and strength in her pets. She once expressed that during the painful and bleak periods she had endured over the past years, her pets had been a source of joy and strength for her. Her final years were marked by a sense of resilience and a deep love for her animal companion. She chose not to have a funeral or a grave marker because she was a private person and saw death as a normal part of life. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think about Doris Day's life and legacy? What's your favorite memory of her? Let us know in the comments section below.